In this video, I will show you how to do a keyword research, why it is essential for your online success. I will teach you the difference between push and pull marketing, and I will show you the three tools I use to get my clients started with their keyword research. If you haven't watched my video about the three pillars of SEO, you really should do that first because it zooms out and takes a full look at the context of SEO, which is essential information before you start creating a keyword list and do some keyword research because SEO is way more than just your content. I am the WordPress doctor. I've been building websites since 2001 and building within WordPress since 2004. I have my own national hosting company and I have a web development agency. I have a degree in communication and marketing. So well, I will show you this fun journey about keyword research. Buckle up because this might be a game changer for you. So why should we go through all the trouble of doing a good keyword research? Well, in life as general and in your online business, you will see that you have to make sure that the ladder you are climbing is against the right wall. Doing a keyword research, make sure that it is. So in marketing, we have push and pull marketing. Push marketing is when you got confronted with advertisement that you didn't ask for. It is product driven. You go outside, you see outdoor advertisement. You turn on your television, you see commercials, you hear commercials on the radio. They're all pushed on you. You didn't ask for it. Pool marketing is something when you have a problem, you are looking for a solution, and on that moment, you get receive an email from someone, or you get called by anyone, or they see your web page, or they type it in Google, and they find their answer. Isn't that awesome when you can solve someone's problem? Now, remember, you get paid by solving people's their problem. Bring value to the market and the market will in exchange pay you for the problems you are solving. Always keep that in mind. So with pool marketing you are not creating a search market. No, you just hook in a market that already exists. The same is with the term wireless in-ear headphones. It has been around since 2008. So now it is a big market where you can hook into. However, AirPods hasn't been in the search engines since 2016. So a pool marketing for AirPods before that time would never been successful. But when Apple did a push marketing strategy on AirPods, now you can do a pool marketing strategy like SEO to get into that market. The same is with your service or your website or your product. Because when John has a cleaning service, which is called John Extreme Clean, don't expect a lot of traffic on those terms. So John should create a page which says House Cleaning Chicago. And when people visit his website, they will see his product, which is called John Extreme Clean, and then he can sell the product. All right, let's get started with those keywords. I only use three tools to determine my keyword list. And the first might surprise you, it is just simple common sense. Just sit down for a minute and write down all the keywords that you can think of that you would type in if you are looking for a product or service or information just like your own website. Just write them down like renting apartments Amsterdam or cleaning houses New York or running shoes brand X. Write them all down. Ask yourself these three questions to get more keywords on your list and be very critical about them. The first one is, what does my product or service do? You are not selling only drills, you are actually selling also a hole which people can make with the drill. How to drill a 5 inch hole in a 20 inch reinforced concrete wall that's in a bunker. Well, that's very long, but you get the picture. Is my target audience local, global or national? You can add your area word to your basic keyword. It's a modifier. Now, you also have to be very critical about your keywords. Ask yourself, will people who enter these keywords in a search engine like my product or service or my solution that I am offering them? Be very honest and critical with yourself 
because it will save you a lot of time and effort. Then we have four types of modifiers. Modifiers are add-ons to your basic keywords like how to clean a house in Chicago or best running shoe 2020, best wireless speaker with massive bass. It's a long list, so here's an example of all the words you can add. Now what is also important are the so-called persuasive SEO keywords like best product X or top 10 of product Z. All these keywords can be entered into your keyword list and make a big difference for your click-through rate. Alright, the second tool we will be using is the Google Auto Suggest feature. Just take your keywords, go to google.com uh, or in your language and type in your keywords. As soon as you start typing, you will see that Google will auto-suggest new words to you. Very valuable information! Because those are the terms that are being used a lot by Google users. Also, when you scroll down in the far bottom of your Google page, there are related keywords for your search. This is gold! Just add them to your keyword list if you think it's valuable for your visitors and you are solving those problems. So by now, you should have a fairly big list with all keywords. However, how much worth are those keywords? That's what we're gonna find out with a third tool. We're gonna find out how much traffic each of those keywords generate monthly and if it is interesting to create an entire page for or a content strategy or whatever. So if you're learning something new till so far, hit that like button so I know we're on the right track. Okay, the third tool we go to ads.google.com and we are logging into Google. So go to ads.google.com and click on sign in. Choose your account and log in with your credentials. Click new Google Ads account. Now you don't want to click on any of these ones. You need to click on the below side of your screen and switch to expert mode. Why is this? Well, I don't want to fill in my credit card details and I don't think you also want to do that. So we also do, will not click any of these. We just click on create an account without a campaign right there. Select your country and your time zone and your currency and press submit. Congratulations, we're all done. Now let's go explore our account. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to click on settings and we're going to switch to expert mode. Switch to expert mode. Alright, you click on overview and you click on tools and settings and go to the keyword planner. Press try it now and press discover new keywords. Here you can type in all the keywords that we have just written down. Let's start with one. House cleaning Chicago. Get results. Let's make this a little bit bigger. As you can see, we see a lot of keyword ideas coming up from Google itself. So that's awesome. You can also sort by average monthly searches. However, there is a huge margin right here between 100 and 1000 people searching. If you have 101 people searching or 999, that's a big difference. We want to see the exact search volumes and there's a way to do that. So just select a few keywords that you want to know the exact search volume on. We press add keywords and go to your keywords button right here and here you'll see and one interesting chart. Now if you hit this drop down button you can change the CPC to the max. So let's change the cost to the max CPC of $82. Just press this button and you see everything changed to $82. Now here you will see that the impressions and now you also see this this column with impressions has just changed and gives you an exact idea of how many searches are being done in your target region in the United States for all languages using Google search engine. So because we are using the max CPC, these impressions should be very close to the actual monthly searches volume for that keyword. And if you compare this tool with other tools around on the internet, paid or free, you will see that these impressions are coming very close to each other. 
So this is an awesome tool to see if those keywords are interesting for you. So on your list now, you will see short keywords and long keywords. The short keywords mainly have a high volume, but also high competition. We call those keywords the short tail keywords. Lots of competition, lots of search volumes, lots of people. The problem is however, to get in the top three ranking on those short tail words is quite a bit of long term planning. On the other hand, we have the long tail keywords as we call them. Those are long sentences, maybe entire questions typed out by our users. A low search volume, but also low competition. And that is a business chance, because if you can answer that question with your proposition, with your service, with your product, you are in business, my friend. The search volume is only 10 to 100 uh, a month. That's not quite a lot. I'm not working for that. Well, let me ask you something. What if 50% of those 100 people come onto your website and became a customer? And let me also add one thing, because those pages you are about to create will stay there forever and ever until your competition catch up. So that one page will generate maybe 50 people a month and become your customer. Now, wouldn't that be great? Take that volume and multiply it by four because maybe you have four long tail keywords that you are going to optimize and going to use. Man, the sky is the limit. So now you can create your SEO strategy for the years to come. Use your short tail keywords for the next mm, two years that you are planning on. Only pick two or three short tail keywords. Don't focus on them much, just create content around it and use your internal link building strategy to push more value to those pages. Remember, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please check out my SEO, the three pillars of SEO tutorial because it will help you. Now, on the other hand, the low hanging fruit are your long tail keywords. If you're a local business or you have just started with your business, this is a, a huge opportunity because it's the low hanging fruit. You can easily create content around it, become the number one, number two or number three on the search engine result page and you will get visitors. Now, isn't that awesome? You and your list of opportunities, well done. Now you have created a keyword list. So the next step is to create content around those keywords, but how to do that on the right way? I am creating a awesome tutorial about the WordPress SEO plugins, which one you should choose and how you should fill it out and use it. Now you make sure you watch it because it's very important because SEO is more than just ranking on the keywords. It is also to getting the people to click on your descriptions and on your titles. So I will teach you that in the next upcoming tutorial. So if you want to know more, hit that subscribe button and I will teach you everything about WordPress related stuff like speeding up your WordPress, doing more about conversion optimization, keyword researches, but also some more information about the backends of WordPress. Okay, have an awesome day.